Oh, good morning. Good morning. It's early. The sun's not up yet. Uh, I don't know, a little after six or something. It's a nice, cool morning. We got super heat wave coming this week, all week. 110 degrees, I think, is the forecast today. Anyway, no time to chit chat right now. Got to get baits in the water. The hook bait is going to be spicy tiger nuts. I'm just going to put two tiger nuts on each hair rig. If you've been paying attention to my fishing lately, you've probably noticed that I've been fishing pretty much exclusively with tiger nuts as my hook bait. And the reason for that is, uh, you know, through, through experimentation, it's my opinion that uh, tiger nuts are uh, pretty much the perfect hook bait. They're super durable. They don't come off the hair very easily. I catch multiple fish with these. More durable than uh, boiled feed corn, for sure. And in uh, my experience, they work just as good as anything else. I think the only thing that would be more durable than this would be an artificial bait, a piece of plastic, plastic corn. And it's my preference to use a natural bait, an actual piece of food. So uh, yeah, tiger nuts just check all the boxes uh, for me for a good hook bait. And probably the biggest thing, my favorite thing about the tiger nuts is I'm not ever wondering if a bluegill or some other nuisance fish has uh, pecked my hook bait off and it's just sitting there with no hook bait. I, I just know it's always there. Uh, in my experience, the, the nuisance fish ha are never able to, uh, to get that hook bait off the hair. This pack bait is a mix of uh, old fashioned oats and sweet feed and a can of cream corn and a can of whole kernel corn and some vanilla. There's plenty of uh, videos about bait on my uh, channel, other videos if you want to check those out. I uh, have more details about uh, the pack bait. This spot and this time of day has been producing good numbers of fish for me uh, as of late. I did uh, catch a 15 pounder here uh, recently. Uh, I'm hoping to kind of replicate that today. I'd like to get into some big fish. Most of the fish have been averaging probably, I don't know, five to eight pounds. This first bait up, I'm putting a pretty giant ball pack bait out there to start with. Really want to get a, a bunch of bait out there uh, early on here. Not casting very far, so it's uh, totally doable with a giant glob of bait on there. This third one's going upstream a little bit here. All right, baits are in the water. Yeah, this uh, section of river is pretty calm current. Uh, this is this section of river is below a section of river that does some really tight, uh, just a series of really tight turns, and it slows down the water. So the water moving through right here is pretty slow. I'd guess one or two miles an hour at the most. So fishing upstream uh, is totally doable in water moving that slow. And because I'm not casting that far, I'm going to chuck a few uh, balls of pack bait over right where my hook baits are laying. Just going to make, you know, just a little uh, balls like this and chuck a few of them over there just to get things started in this swim. Perfect. just like I'm sure the GoPro can't pick it up there's just a whole bunch of bubbles going on looks like there's a frenzy activity going on right on top of where this bait is over there something just found my bait and is who knows what it is might be a catfish might be a turtle I don't know but there's something going on over here I was kind of hoping the rod would take off while I was saying that <laughs> uh, anyone Anyone? No. Just reel in to rebait and got a slack line on this one here. Drop back bite. There's a fish on. That's for sure. Fish on. That's the same one I was talking about. There's a bubble 
bubbles going on over there. There's still a bunch of bubbles going on over there. I think there's multiple fish. Got a little turbo carp here, I think. Yeah. And he came off. That's fine. He was just going to get me all wet anyway. Yeah, I must admit, once I saw that it was like a three or four pound fish, I kind of started handling them a little rougher than I would if it was a bigger fish with the idea that, or the hopes that uh, maybe he might release himself at the bank here. <laughs> it worked out pretty good. Something happening here. I think there's a fish on. Yep. Running up right next to the bank down there. Right next to the bank. It's coming right into me. What are you? That's carp. Pretty chillaxed carp at that. He didn't kick up a tail or anything. He's just sitting there. Okay. Yeah, not a mirror. Just that muddy water kind of makes it hard to see him. But uh, yeah, just a rambunctious little four pound carp start the morning. I've had a couple of fish on the line. First one landed. Hopefully there's some bigger fish around. So long youngster. See ya. Yeah the hook is embedded in my in my mat. I don't think I'm gonna reuse this hook. No. It's junk. Getting a new one. I know some guys carry a rig wallet for their pre-tied rigs and those are pretty nifty really they're pretty cool but kind of bulky for my style I just like to use a little uh, piece of rectangular foam here these are uh, foam floor mats that I have and I just cut a little piece and it just fits nice in my tack box there I don't have some separate um, you know, big wallet thing that also has got to take up space in my in my bag so that's the way I like to do it just pre-tied uh, hair rig that I make ahead of time there's the hook Swivel. Just gonna tie that to the main line. Back to fishing. Yeah. Uh oh, getting a double. Yep, for sure. For sure. Tell you what, this doesn't feel like a giant here. I'm gonna turn on the bait runner and let that one alone. Let's see what I can investigate about this fish here. Ah, this feels like a better fish. One's heading off. Okay, we got double action, double action. I'm gonna reach down and stop this one in his tracks real quick here before he gets too far. There we go. It seems to help just put a little bit of resistance on and get him to stop. This feels like a heavier fish. Swam out into the main in the middle of the river now. Like I said before, the current, there's not much of a current, but oh, this fish came off. Hmm. Okay, that felt like the uh, heavier fish. Well, you play the card you're dealt. Let's see what this fish is doing. 
it's hard to know how big these fish might be just by you know what's on what feels like at the end of the line without actually seeing anything sometimes the giants will just be very very relaxed until the last minute it's not a giant though Yeah, moving in the right direction, slightly larger fish. I give this one, uh, I don't know, six, seven pounds maybe. Good fight on this fish, moving in the right direction. I'd like to get a 10 plus pounder on the bank this morning. Starting to get hot, got about an hour left or so before I'm gonna, gonna bolt, we'll see. See you, tell your grandpa to stop by, will ya? Bye. Bolt of lightning out of here. <laughs> We got a slow runner here. I'm gonna let him run for a second. Okay. Oh, jumped up in the air. Did you see that, or was I standing in the way? He's probably standing in the way. That fish jumped up in the air like a bass. Come on in here, bassy. Are you a grassy bassy? common yellow bass scaly bass get in here okay boy that's a frisky bass hardest fighting bass I've ever caught I'm gonna let him wear himself out a little bit right here Maybe then he won't treat me so badly on the mat. Done yet? Not quite. A couple more bursts. About now. Okay. I guess it might be the bright light that makes them freak out so much. They're so used to swimming around in the dark in this dark muddy water that, uh, I mean, there's zero visibility pretty much. Once this fish goes one inch under the water, can't even see them. So yeah, they're not used to seeing bright sunlight like this, I'm sure. Pretty shocking, pretty shocking. Back in the water. See you next time. Man, that's an awesome. I was just thinking about what I was gonna do if that was gonna be it for today. What time I was gonna leave. It's about 8.30 in the morning. It's not that hot yet, but the sun is blazing. <clears throat> I was looking at the weather. The barometric pressure is over 30. It's like 30.15, which Generally, I don't give too much uh, weight to the barometric pressure. But sometimes, when the fish aren't biting, then I start looking at it and kind of, I don't know if that has much to do with it or not. But the wife's tale says that high pressure equals bad fishing. I've had plenty of great fishing days on high pressure days. It has other factors are probably more important. I don't think barometric pressure is nothing, but I don't think it's as important as a lot of people like to think it is. I've had great fishing days when the wind's blowing from the east. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> okay. So, I just look over, and this other line is slack. I don't know if I bumped it while I was fighting this fish or if I got a bite. Yeah, little turbo carp. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Check on this line here. I guess it is moving. It's moving. There it goes. All right, I must have a fish on here. Yep. Ooh, almost got him there. 
sneak attack with the net. He was too fast. Let's try again. Slow, slow, slow. Slow, 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 fast. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Yeah, this is actually one of the larger fish of the morning. I'll give her five, five and a half. Back in the water. Get you off. See ya. I guess I must be spoiled because I kind of sitting here kind of feeling a little like down on my luck. Like, oh man, all I keep catching is these five to seven pound fish or three to six pound fish or whatever they are. Small fish. Boo hoo hoo. And I hear from some of you guys who go weeks without catching a fish and I should just thank my lucky stars that I'm able to catch any fish at all really and then I'm able to even just be out here right that's supposed to be the main part of the whole thing right it's just be out doing this kind of stuff a bad day of fishing is certainly better than a good day at work right that's the saying of course this isn't necessarily a bad day of fishing <laughs> what have I caught four or five fish I think I haven't really been counting I'm not ready to call it yet for today it's 8 30 something this it's hot in the sun the sun blaring on me it's hot but if I can get back behind my umbrella it's actually pretty comfortable I mean any day when you have the the time and the the health and the the ability and the resources to get out and do something that you enjoy that's a good day Any day I get to go fishing is a good day. That startled me. Uh-oh. Do I have a bigger fish maybe, huh? Maybe way over on the other side of the river, next to the bank on the other side. He took off fast. Wow. Hard to know what size fish I'm dealing with here, you know. A lot of times those big ones will they'll just swim with the with me, you know. They feel that thing pulling on their lip and they'll swim with it just to reduce that uh, tension pulling on their lip. Won't really know what I got until he gets right in front of me here. Either that or if he jumps out of the water. Got him. Snuck that net up underneath of him before he had a chance to take off again. Yeah, just hooked right in the bottom lip, just like that hair egg's supposed to do. Yeah, keeping me busy, keeping me busy. This might even be the big fish of the day. I give this seven pounds, probably. Nice, back he goes. I'm doing the net release on this fish, I don't know why. Not really necessary here. It drops off pretty good here. They can just dive in, no problem, but we'll give this guy a, a net release. As soon as he can get his nose out of my net. Get your nose out of there, dude. All right, see ya. I wonder where the grass carp are at. When I started fishing this river this season, I fully expected to be catching probably equal amount of grass carp versus common carp. I, I know there's tons, or at least there was tons of grass carp. I don't know if they're just not in this section of the river right now this time of year, or uh, I don't know what's going on. I haven't seen much for grass carp. I've only caught one out of out of the fish that I've caught out of this river this season, probably caught 20 carp and uh, 20 common carp to one grass carp. I know there's tons of uh, silver carp and, and big head carp in here too, but those are uh, they're plankton feeders. They don't eat this kind of stuff. Uh oh. Yeah, we got a 
something running away with this one. This is the one that's out in the middle of the river. I don't know, the last few fish, I'm just, I've always I've just been thinking, well, yeah, that's probably going to be it then, I guess. That probably, the bite's probably going to slow down, but it just, uh, just keeps going steadily. Good numbers of fish. Try to be sneaky here. See if I can get uh, this fish kind of gently pulled in here and over top of my net and lift up on them before I even realize that there's some crazy mammal on here trying to bring him on the bank to take his picture. The fact that this fish hasn't uh, reached the surface at all during this fight uh, makes me think that it might be a bigger fish. All those little fish can do that. They'll be slapping the surface with their tails and stuff. This thing's just been sticking to the bottom. This whole area in front of me is full of plumes of mud from the fish doing bursts along the bottom, kicking up big clouds of mud. This thing's been 10 feet in front of me for a good full five minutes. I still have no idea, can't see anything. Oh yeah, yeah, common crab, this is a bigger one. That's a bigger, that's a bigger fish. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yes, got him. Yeah, that's big fish of the morning so far. That was a much bigger fish. I think I will get a weight on this fish just for fun. 11 pounds, 14 ounces in the net. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Nice fish here, 11 pound fish, 10, 11, something like that. I don't really care about exact weight, but uh, yeah, this is what I've been asking for. Good sized fish like this, gave me a good fight. It was long, long fight. I'll cut out most of it, but uh, yeah, turned out pretty good. I'm not done yet. I'm gonna stay a little longer. Hopefully this guy's got some brothers or sisters or maybe even his parents are hanging around here today. Back in the water he goes. The old net release. Get your nose out of the net. There you go. So long, see you next time, get bigger. Oh man, I just casted this out. Just put it out. I was just getting ready to sit down and crawl back behind my umbrella again. Ooh. I'd like to think I got another big fish on here, but Blah, blah, blah. You don't know until you see him, right? Got him. Yeah, they're keeping me busy. Getting a decent workout this morning, bringing in these fish. I don't know what number this is. Seven, eight, I don't know, who cares? Good times. Okay. Uh oh, that one just dropped back. Gonna run? There he goes. All right. Yeah. Just keep on coming. This one's a little bit bigger. Yeah, I'm actually getting kind of a good workout in this heat, sweating bullets here. Good fish, bigger than the last one. Eight, I give eight, nine pounds maybe. They just keep coming steady. I love it. Great day. Really like to top off this morning with a 15 pound plus. that yeah there's a fish on here yeah. that's 
just baiting up my rig from that previous fish with my last a uh, little bit of pack bait of course i have more supplies to make pack bait but uh i'm not gonna make a new batch it's getting pretty late in the morning here and pretty hot This might be a buffalo. Not a smallmouth though. I don't know. I didn't the saw the fin come up. It didn't look like a common carp fin. I wonder if this is a big mouth buffalo. It is. Get in here. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, this is a big mouth buffalo, folks. Not a smallmouth. I've never caught one of these. I know a lot of people snag them when they're bass fishing and stuff, but I don't, I don't do bass fishing, so I don't really, I never snagged one either. Yeah, big mouth, big mouth buffalo is what this is. And uh, a lot of people confuse these with uh, common carp because they do have uh, a similar look, but they're quite a bit different. The big difference between uh, these and the smallmouth buffalo, as you can see, they have the, the mouth is at the front, as at the point of their head, whereas a smallmouth buffalo, their mouth is underneath that points down toward the bottom where this one the mouth points straight out from the tip of the nose and of course the coloring is they've got this kind of uh, greenish kind of goldish uh, thing uh, on their back there they're lighter colored on the bottom like most fish but uh, yeah brown greenish kind of iridescent kind of coloring on their scales like I said I've never caught one of these they're not very slimy uh, compared to a carp or a catfish, not a, not a, not very slimy. That's interesting. I didn't expect that. Very cool fish. Uh, you know, I've read that they're difficult to, to target specifically to catch these fish. A lot of people catch them on flies. Uh, they they eat all sorts of things. They're uh, omnivore, and they're a native fish to to the Midwest. Here, they were here uh, long before we were. They're native fish in these in these rivers and lakes. And this is a small one. Very small. These things. Big mouth buffalo, they'll get 50 pounds or more. This is a small one. I'll let him recuperate for just a minute here before I give him a shove off. He's poking his nose in the end of the net, so I think he's ready. There he goes. See ya, thank you. Well, that's gonna be it. The oven is preheated. And let the baking begin. I'm going to get out of here. Pretty great day. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.